On behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I welcome you all to the Barony Hall today for today's congregation for the conferment of degrees. It's an incredibly special day, it's special for you, our, our graduates, who have gone through so many difficult times in terms of your studies and trying to get through the last few months in, in terms of this pandemic. It's also special for your family and your friends, the people who have been with you every step of the way. And we're absolutely delighted to have everyone here in, in the hall today. This is the first time that we've been able to hold uh, graduations at Strathclyde for two years. In November 2019, the last time that we, we had the graduations, nobody believed that what happened actually did happen. And to have you all here and to have families here to, to celebrate together is just an incredible feeling. And we're also, it's a special day for our staff, our staff who are here today. Uh, the work that they've had to put in to adapt all of the, the courses, teaching in different methods, I've worked with them over the last 20 months and I can testify to the amount of work and challenge that they've faced as well. And so it's special for them and it's special for us to get all together. The graduation ceremony, which we have today, is also known as a commencement ceremony. Um, you call it that in, in the US and in other countries. And it's, it signifies not an end to a journey, but a beginning of a journey. And that's the way that we embrace graduations at Strathclyde. In a few moments, each of you will individually come up onto the stage and walk towards me. And it's like you're coming to the end of your time as a student, as a graduate. I will then have the honor of capping you. The capping is a, is, is a, a mark of achievement. And at that point, you change from being a student, a graduand, to being a graduate and an alumnus or an alumna of the university. And you will be joining more than 175,000 graduates from Strathclyde worldwide. And of those, there are about 40,000 business school graduates all over the world. And you'll walk off here in a new phase in your life. And I find that quite profound to think about that. And I'm, I'm sure you won't be thinking of that because you'll be scared to fall over or, or trip up. But I think your family, when you, when you see you coming over and seeing that transition into that next stage of your life is, is very important. The coronavirus pandemic has changed many things and uh, we've had to make some changes. If you look around, you see that we're, we're socially distanced. Uh, we're not able to get as many people into the barony as we would like. And one of the, the things that we had to bring out of the, the closet is, is this here. In the past, um, graduates would come over and they would kneel and then get capped. Uh, but we, we did away with that um, quite a number of years ago. But if those of you have got mothers or, or fathers or grandparents who graduated from Strathclyde, it's very likely that they would have kneeled here and been, uh, and, and been graduated themselves. So it's a nice, a nice feeling to, to think about that. So as I've said, very special day for your family who are here and your friends who are here. It's, it's incredibly special. So I, I say to, to, the, to you, when your loved one comes up to get capped, please celebrate, you know, savor that minute and, you know, cheer, clap loudly, get, you know, and make this day as special as possible. So without further ado, I now declare this congregation open and I invite Professor John Quigley, the Vice Dean of Strathclyde Business School, to present our graduates. Executive Dean, in the name of the university and by the authority of the Senate, I present to you the students for the degree of Master of Science in International Marketing, Sean Michael Clark. <laughs> Abigail Lauren Diaz. <laughs> Leslie Hammerton. Sophie Margaret Innes. K. 
Karen Mary John. Shawnee McPherson. Blair Kenadja Beck Pedersen. Ewan Scott. Kirsty Louise Stevenson. Graham Watson. Chung Lee Wu. Iona Zafiri. In Human Resource Management, Alexandra Bondarenko. Abigail Annalie Bull. Callum Ross Courtney. Alan Stewart Davies. Lucy Ferguson. Kirsty Ann Harper. Emily Joy Hutton. Rosanna Margaret Jenkins. Sarah Claire Lang. Harriet Jane Lake. Emma Langiano. Sarah Elizabeth Lawson. Rasheen Lombardi. Rona Dorasa McKenzie. Fiona Ann Marshall. Charlambia Molesky. Ailsa Sophie Nicholson. Ruth Margaret Pearson. Bronte Kate Wallage. Abby Wilson. Hannah Jane Yule. In International Human Resource Management, Jenny Cameron. Annabelle Ferry. Shitegu Uduka Ibekwe. Jenna Lauren Mackey. Adabola Gi Kujirati Nimiel. Lois Bianca Ruba. For the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration, Matthew John Rodriguez. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in International Business with Business Enterprise, Rebecca Rachel Young. In International Business with Marketing, Kate Fotheringham.
for the degree of postgraduate diploma in international marketing, Akshat Athena. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, but most of all, our graduates, I warmly welcome you once again to the special ceremony and memorable day, a day that marks the culmination of a sustained period of demanding work and dedication for all of you. You have graduated in front of your family, your friends, your peers, and your, your teachers. So I begin my address by congratulating you our class of 2021 for your achievements during what are probably the most challenging circumstances. Congratulations. In a short while, you will be invited to join the academic procession when we leave the hall. This is a symbol that you're no longer students. You're now full members of the academic community at the University of Strathclyde, and one that I mentioned earlier is over 175,000 people worldwide. This November, we are celebrating our first in-person graduation ceremonies since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. The pandemic has challenged our health systems, impacted our economies, and changed the way we work. But it has also demonstrated what society can achieve when we work together. And it has placed science, business, marketing, human resource management at the very forefront of the solutions to the challenges that we face. But it was science, business and universities that delivered vaccines for the COVID-19 virus in record time. And it is science and education that will help us address the most pressing issue of our day, and that's climate change. As everyone knows, earlier this month, Glasgow hosted COP26, the summit of world leaders and nations, which came together to try and agree measures to prevent catastrophic warming of our planet. But we must also recognise that the challenges of coronavirus and climate change have exposed divisions in our societies, weaknesses in our systems, and even seen the denial of science and expert knowledge. The University of Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is encouraged and valued, an institution exemplified by tolerance and inclusivity, one which seeks to play a significant role in shaping the world in which we live through our teaching, through our research, and through you as graduates. And now, as graduates of Strathclyde, you too must play your part in drawing upon the knowledge that you have gained here and the learning that is still to come to build a brighter future, using the business principles, the HR skills, the marketing skills, everything that you've gained in your time at Strathclyde to solve the pressing challenges that we face, and there are many. COP26 saw the US President Barack Obama come to the University at Strathclyde to speak with our students about the important role of the youth and young people in tackling climate change. And Mr. Obama had a simple but very powerful message. He said, get active. And he said that on the steps of our new learning and teaching building. And this is an appeal that I ask you, our graduates, to act upon. And in getting active, I hope you will demonstrate Strathclyde's socially progressive values and ethos of tolerance, pluralism, and a desire to make a positive dis difference. In reaching this moment, you will all have had the support and encouragement of your, your family, of your friends, of your mentors, of your teachers. 
I know that some of them are here today, but because of social distancing, we can't fit everyone in. And so there will be people thinking of you just now. And I'm sure that you will, you will not have been able to have got through this without them. And, you know, I want now, if we can just spend a, just a couple of minutes, if we can just take our opportunity to show your appreciation for your family and your friends and your mentors with a sincerely felt round of applause for those who are here and those who can't be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Similarly, as I said earlier, uh, your journey has been helped by our wonderful staff here and those who also can't make it because of social distancing. They have worked so hard under very trying circumstances to try and provide you with a first-class education and an outstanding student experience. Your success is their reward. And so, graduates, can I now ask you to join me in thanking your teachers and your staff for all their support over your time here. Thank you very much. So your success and our success as a university is in no small part due to the efforts of our staff, those who are here and those who are all over the, the business school and the campus. And they will deliver our vision of Strathclyde as a socially progressive leading international technological university. Of all the key figures in our history, Professor John Anderson was the one who made it all possible back in 1796 at the end of the Scottish Enlightenment. And that was when Strathclyde was founded for the benefit of all humankind and to be a place of useful learning. Anderson believed in knowledge for the greater good and education for all. And we call that widening participation today. Strathclyde is at the very forefront of widening access to higher education. And we welcome those with the ability and the desire to learn regardless of their personal circumstances. And just as a, a, a little bit of note, as the business school uh, has a target from the government to accept 40% of their students from those from the lowest uh, categories and we call multiple deprivation. And we hit that. And we hit it, but then having almost the highest entry criteria in the whole of the UK. And that tells you something about how our society has developed, that we are bringing people in from all parts of society and we're taking our students and making them the very best they can be. We're also a research-intensive university whose vision is to make a positive difference to the lives of our students, society, and to the world. Through our groundbreaking research, we're helping to change the world for the better. Our researchers are leading the development of innovative technologies that will facilitate the transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable energy sources, such as wind, solar, and hydrogen. And we hope those will power our future world to tackle climate change. And our business school academics are at the very heart of that. Our researchers who are here are working on these specific issues. They're also working on developing new drugs, using new digital manufacturing processes that will provide cheaper, more effective treatments against cancer, kidney diseases, and inflammatory diseases, while also helping our health services evolve to face the challenges of health and social care in the changing demographics of the 21st century. Through our focus on entrepreneurial education, we are helping students and staff and graduates like yourself to create new businesses with sustainability in mind. And these, in turn, are creating jobs and supporting economic growth. We're leading the revitalization of this part of the Glasgow city through the Glasgow City Innovation District, and that is attracting companies, both large and small, to work with the university to create new ideas, technologies and solutions in a range of areas such as health tech, fintech, 5G, industrial informatics, space and quantum. And that is all based on our campus. And you might not know that outside of California, Glasgow is the centre for space research and producing satellites in the whole world. As a university, we continually work to enhance our students' experience, investing in our campus, as evidenced by the new Strathclyde Sport Building and the new Learning and Teaching Building, which we just opened in the summer. We're investing in health and wellbeing services, 
putting our students at the heart of everything that we do. And our progress and efforts in all of those areas have been recognised in recent years with a host of awards. Strathclyde became the only university to win the Times Higher Education UK University of the Year twice. The last time was in 2019. We won the Business School of the Year, the Workplace of the Year and the Research Project of the Year. And that has all been done maybe in the last, say, five or six years. And despite the many challenges that we faced and the universities faced and the business schools faced, Strathclyde Business School has had reason to celebrate. This year, we were proud and honoured to have received a £50 million gift from one of our alumni, a Dr Charles Huang. Uh, that gift is the largest in Scottish university history. And we were delighted that £20 million of that is going to the business school. That £20 million is going to do two, three things. One is to create a new institute for international business. Another is to create a scholarship programme for global leaders. And then the third is to create a suite of entrepreneurship prizes for graduates and students who have got great ideas from your research that you want to then commercialise that. And I was out with Charles. Charles is, is now a billionaire. And I was out when he was here a couple of months ago. And, and I said to him, you know, Charles, tell me a little bit about your background. And he, and he, he did marketing. And he then went on to do an MBA and did a PhD here. And he said, you know, when, when I was here, I, I, I came from China and I wanted to come to Strathclyde because it was, their work was very applied and, and he felt it would help him in his life. And I says, where did you stay? And he said, I stayed in a place called the Red Road Flats. And uh, now these have been knocked down. And it's a place where asylum seekers and, you know, you know, really, it's not, it wasn't a very nice part of the, the city. And, and he says, you know, I, I came here and, uh, and I felt it was just the best place that I'd ever been. And it, it changed my life. And I asked him, why did you decide to, you know, give this money to the university? What was it? And he said, well, the thing was, it's, it was because of the staff. After I left, I went back to China and I had a lot of challenges to get through my, my career. But I always knew that I could go back and ask the staff from the courses that I taught uh, advice, get their guidance and to help me. And he says, and, and the Strathclyde staff did that all the time. And in particular, there was one person, a, a Professor Stephen Young, who sadly passed away just before we received the gift, who, who really helped him. And that is something that epitomizes Strathclyde. It epitomizes our staff and it epitomizes the way we do things. You're here, you're a Strathclyder. And you'll always be a Strathclyder. And when you go on in your, your career, we want you to stay in touch. We want you to, to make us part of your career. And please come back and then please be ambassadors for us so that you can help future students that are coming through in your course. And we'll definitely be in touch with you. And please feel free to contact all of our staff. Even if you're moving into areas, I know if you're in marketing or HRM uh, or any other area, it may not be in business. But we will then put you in contact with experts elsewhere in the university or part of our wider university network. So it's very important that you do keep in touch with us. Now, the other £30 million has is, is been donated and it's going to go towards a, a new technology building that's going to be made with sustainability at heart, similar to the technology and innovation centre that you'll see at the, uh, the bottom of the hill. Now, other news. Uh, I know some of you are from marketing here. Our Department of Marketing celebrates its 50th anniversary uh, this year. It's the, one of the oldest and most established uh, departments of marketing in the whole of, whole of Europe. And uh, our HRM department is one of the departments, and you'll, you'll be able to find this out even tonight. Uh, it's the department that produces some of the top HRM graduates in the whole of the UK. Tonight, we, there are a number of awards. It's the HR, HR Network Awards. And for the top, the top prize, every single nominee is a Strathclyde graduate coming from the HRM programme. So we know we'll definitely win. We just don't know who will win. So I can tell you Strathclyde's going to win tonight. But that tells you the quality of your business school. It tells you the quality of your programme. It tells you the quality of the university. And it's with immense pride that we see you graduate today. 
And though you may be leaving us, remember you're a Strathclyder and you'll always be a Strathclyder. We we'll hope you will continue to stay in touch, to let us know how you get on and continue to contribute to Strathclyde's activities and success in the future. So, this is us. Now it's time for you to celebrate with your loved ones, to move on from here. And on behalf of the university, congratulations again to each and every one of you for your success and your journey here at Strathclyde. I wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you very much. So this is us. Um, we're now going to have an academic procession. Now, the way that it will work in, under these socially distanced uh, measures is that the, the academics will, will first of all leave the, the building. Uh, we are going to make our way to the learning and teaching building where there will be some refreshments and an opportunity to, to mingle and, and meet your classmates and also some of our staff. After the, when the academics go, we then would like the graduates to then follow us to make the, the same uh, walk as all of those graduates that have come before you over the last 225 years of this university's existence. Family and friends, if you can wait, please, until the graduates have left, and then if you can then move on and join us uh, over at the Learning and Teaching Building. So without further ado, I now declare this congregation closed, and please be upstanding. <laughs>